hey, you got your stuff with you? And I said, yeah, I do. And he says, well, put it on, you're reffing tonight. And I was like. Yeah. I was a big wrestling fan. I'd go down to Maple Leaf Gardens. It ran every three weeks like clockwork at Maple Leaf Gardens. What I would do is I would go down every three weeks and I actually went to the office, Jack Tunney's office, and talked to Norm Kimber, who was the ring announcer at the time, but also worked in the office for Jack. And I said, you know, I'm down for every show. If there any way I can get some like season tickets, if there is, such a thing exists, so I can get the same seats every time I wanted really good ringside seats. And he says, sure, but if you miss one show, you lose the seats. I said, I'm not gonna miss the show. So I ended up getting two tickets right beside that ramp that used to go from the dressing room level with the ring. Second row, right, right beside it. So it fit in perfectly with my hobby of taking pictures, which I would go to, there used to be a place called Direct Film that used to have double your prints for a dollar. So I would go there and double my prints so I'd keep one set of prints for myself as souvenir and I'd go back and sell the other set of prints. It fueled my habit, basically. And I got caught by Elio Zarlenga selling the pictures outside Maple Leaf Gardens one day. I didn't know he was working for Jack Tunney and the guy who actually took the photos for the uh, Strangled Hold program. So he was like, hey, can I take a look at your pictures? I said, sure, here you go, dude. He says, you take some pretty good pictures. I said, thanks, they're two bucks each. He says, you can't sell them. Said, what do you mean I can't sell them? I said, who are you? He says, I work for Jack Tunney. I went, oh. <laughs> he says, but he was a real good dude. He said, you know what, I'll tell you what. I don't want to be, I don't want to be a prick here. So just move down a little bit away from outside of, don't, don't do it right in front of the gardens. Just kind of, there's a little hotel next door called the Car Carlton Inn. He says, sit in front of the Carlton Inn and do it there. And then we became friends after that. Every, every show I'd run into him, I even ran into him at a couple of indie shows. And we became friends and he said, you know what, I'm gonna to talk to Jack and see if maybe I can bring him on board to helping me take pictures. So I met Jack and Jack said, well, we don't need a camera guy, another cameraman right now to take pictures, but ah, we'll find something for the kid to do. And that just led to picking up guys from the airport and bringing them down to the gardens or uh, setting up the ring and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, photography got me into the business, so to speak. The business that I loved as a fan. It was Pat Patterson who came to me and said, hey listen, we're gonna make you a referee by black pants, black sneakers, a blue powder, you know, those powder blue shirts and a black bow tie, carry it with you all the time. And I was, I don't know if it was naive or whatever, but I, I didn't think enough to go and start asking people, okay, I, they're gonna make me a referee, can somebody, you know, just give me a few pointers. Uh, <laughs> clue me in on what I'm supposed to do. But I just carried the stuff with me and then one day Chief J. Strongbow said, hey, you got your stuff with you? And I said, yeah, I do. And he says, well, put it on, you're reffing tonight. And I was like, I, I didn't want to say, hey, no, because I haven't been trained yet. I just said, okay, because I figured if I say no, then I lose my opportunity. He says, okay, you're refereeing SD Jones versus Jose Luis Rivera tonight. Go talk to them. And I went into the locker room. Thankfully, I was friends with S.D. Jones, and I said, hey, S.D., I'm refereeing your match tonight. And he said, oh, great. I said, I've never refereed before. He says, don't worry about it. Listen to me. I will talk you through this. It'll be fine. I eased off from there, and from there, that's when I started thinking, okay, now I gotta start talking to people and the other referees and getting some insight into what I'm supposed to be doing.